framework the uh, the framework of prep class is similar to that of the real exam that of the real exam so that and secondly you can get because you can select question from 10 to 100 in that and you can select by domain or you can select it by knowledge area this is the only reason to let go for the prep cast do you have another question uh maybe you can give your best tips for the like for i'll the... do <laughs> i'll do that i'll do that later on i'll do that there are that's the plan to give the everything that is particularly i will whatever i know i'll try to give it thank you okay thank you. I, guys so let's we are going to start in 2 minutes but if you have any question post the question in the chat box i will answer that question okay uh, please explain uh, manage and control quality so vakas the basic difference between manage quality is basically it's a preventive action you are trying to improve the process you are trying to improve the process you see wh what is the thing in the process and you try to improve the process deliverables are being built while the work is being done you are trying to improve at that time whereas control quality is that the deliverable has been made now you want to avoid that this defect does not go to the customer okay and the second purpose of a control quality is also to verify the deliverable according to quality management plan i hope that is clear okay uh, can you please explain the difference uh, um mind map for practice i use i will give i will share the mind maps i will show you but what do you mean by <coughs> mind map for practice i will give them for review and, uh, can you explain quality functional deployment is a special type of uh, uh, workshop facilitated workshop adil in which the team gets together and we collect the requirement and we match it to the quality management plan it used to be in the pmp it's not anymore if anyone else has any question they can put it also the people watching live if they have any question uh, they can put it and i will be more than happy to answer okay new batch timings my batch timings are always the same 8 pm pakistan time 8:30 indian time and you can like compare the timings according to your own domains okay anyone else who has question or we can start with the pm uh, vignesh ab testing ab testing is a special type of testing that is used in the uh, facebook uses it all the marketers use it let's say they they put two ads i actually made two videos today uh, for april and for journey of process okay so let let's say i put journey of process and then i'll put journey of uh, agi and i will see what is the how audience is responding to that thing so that is called ab testing you choose two things you uh, see how that's working and you change your plan according to that in when many of the countries they give uh, free if you go to the big malls like if you are in uae there is lulu there is giant they give free coffee free things like that the purpose is that they get the customer feedback on those things how Uh, how do you reflect and they change according to that some companies put the price according to it and they modify the price of the substance that is more of a ab testing if anyone has an guys please let the questions come in if you have any question keep on coming keep on coming independent cost comes in conduct procurement right uh, no independent cost is basically uh, independent estimates are more of a output of uh, plan procurement so independent the purpose of independent estimate is let's say you went to buy iphone from the market and market has like there are four and five uh, buyers and all of them are giving you the same kind of uh, all of the all of them giving you same price maybe they have put the monopoly or even in any market that is uh, all the four five sellers are there for something all of them try to make a monopoly plus minus 5% tolerance so you want to check the real price of something so then you get the independent cost estimate to actually verify what is the price of that okay so it will come in the plan procurement right plan procurement 
do you have some uh, agile videos yes i use i do have agile videos i will tell you guys how to use my channel in this uh, in this video so i'll show you there's a playlist entire playlist on agile i guess 8 to 9 videos are there on agile in addition to that I, today i'm gonna i actually made another video journey of agile which probably today or tomorrow probably tomorrow Uh, tomorrow i'll upload it to the youtube so do subscribe and click that bell icon so that you can get notification i normally put daily at least one video of something okay or if i don't have any topic i put a motivational video to keep you guys motivated okay can you please tell which resource to follow the pmp pression now faiza that's a very important question faiza unmute yourself i, I would like to talk to you is it possible hi um, hi my name is faiza Yeah, Aiza, yeah. have you taken PMP training? Ah, uh, no, I haven't. Actually, I'm preparing for the PMP on my own right now. I am in the middle of the preparation. So there are so many uh, resources in the market right now available. So um, when you go to the market, everyone tells you this book to follow or that book to follow. So apart from PMP guide, um, PMP of six, I am uh, referring to Vita's tenth uh, edition. But there are so many in the market. Uh, I really don't know which ones to follow for. good preparation okay the first question faza i would like to know do you like to read books um not really but um, no, that's an important thing yeah. if you don't like to read books you don't need to read book you don't need to read book but for the, clearing pmp let, i let think me, it is let yeah, me, yeah. Let, let me put it let me people have said that it is compulsory no none of my we have 179 pmp and out of 179 only i guess nine of them read the book pm whatever the book they like i never recommend a book if you uh -huh. don't want to read the book everything is available take a topic pick uh -huh. the topic go on the youtube watch the video you can watch my video i have everything there all the journeys there okay uh -huh. everything available on the you don't need to read any book actually and okay. if you are if you have taken 35 hours pdus right maybe you have taken from joseph philip or randy ramdeal or someone mm, have you taken no no, no. so for, for you need 35 pdus from somewhere i uh, know i will take after i'll go through the book once uh, so i i wanted to have complete knowledge uh, of what i is. okay the important thing about the exam 2021 is Before before twenty twenty one, the exam was based on PEM book. Like more mm -hmm. of the exam was in twenty twenty one. No PEM book is sufficient for the exam because exam is based on exam content outline. So you need to more of understand the topics. There's a website, uh, PM Illustrated by Mike Grips. It's a visual website. Okay. So let let uh, let me put the link here in the chat box. it okay. has each and every topic in it and if you are looking for the book that is one of the good book uh, that you can like entire website in the form of book that can okay. work for you uh, rita guys let me put it this rita is not updated according to new exam content outline first thing okay. pem book 7 or pem book 6 any book you study is more than sufficient for the exam if you study pem book 6 also studied agile guide with it but you don't need to know the ittos because exam is not going to have ittos in it and uh, all the exam will be situational okay faza is it clear yeah i have one more question uh, if you if uh, for instance if i don't have the first hand experience of managing the project i have uh, the corporate experience but not the first hand experience of managing the product project so um, um uh, will i be able to pass pmp i wanted to know that uh, the first thing is the would you be able to qualify for pmp yeah that, that is the first question so you write yes. down your application if they accept it then you qualify for pmp if you qualify for a pmp if you work hard and follow the proper road map yeah there is no issue you can pass the pmp there is no issue it's not like pmp guys is not something that you must have done Uh, the project uh, as a project manager project engineer operations you must know those things okay having 3 years experience in the project is more than sufficient it's not always managing so write down the things in your application what have you done how have you managed the project and they will or of course assist you okay faiza is it clear okay okay yes, okay okay so uh, what is sunk cost 
so uh, when a sun causes the amount uh, that is wasted okay that is gone that is like a titanic you don't talk about in that so it is also used a lot in the projects as well as in advertising for example if you put if pepsi put a ad of 1 million and that uh, that ad has not produced anything so when they are uh, putting a new ad they should never add those cost which has been wasted that is a sunk cost that is gone we cannot go back to and worry about that cost okay thank you okay can you okay your question guys keep the questions coming i'm a little bit confused with agile and scrum so uh, aruj uh, go and watch my agile videos i explain the entire agile is an umbrella scrum is one of the type in the uh, agile okay agile has many types scrum of scrum is actually one of them okay so anyone has any other questions i guess we should start with the questions okay, let me see which book is best for agile preparation uh, i would say scrum mubashir i would say scrum guide uh, if you can download that is free from uh, website you can also study that that's a good book for agile okay so let's start the question so guys uh, before starting the question i would like to share how this is how to answer the questions okay and if you, in the meantime if you have any question keep the question coming i actually love your questions and i would love to answer them okay i ask like maybe cycle time versus please, velocity please keep on putting in the chat box and when i come back i'll answer from them okay thank you and if you have anything to share please raise your hand there is an option to raise hand in the chat box okay how to answer the question now there is a step there is a procedures that you must follow first of all in any question i recommend reading the last line first okay reading the last line first basically gives you the context what the question is asking what should the project manager do next what should the project manager should have done before and it describes you where do you stand in the project it can tells you are you in initiation are you in planning are you in execution monitoring and control or in closing where are you in the project and maybe where in the knowledge area scope schedule cost it tells you where are you in the project i highly recommend read the last line first once you have read the last line now this is more of a optional thing i recommend going to the options reading options a b c d when you read option most of the time you can eliminate at least one of the option you can eliminate one of the option then you actually read the question now reading the question is very important read it slowly okay read it super slow why most of the time people read the question in fast and then they again have to read it reread reread it so you actually waste time three and four times rereading the same question the best way is slow down and read the question in the best possible way once you have read the question now the purpose of the reading the question is to defining the problem okay you need to define the problem what the problem is in the project there will be 180 questions all situational in the real pmb exam in every question you need to solve a problem you need to solve a problem whatever the question is so first define the problem and then how you will actually solve it now when you define the problem and you follow this step two option most of the time will be easily eliminated two option will remain you need to focus on those two option one option will be good answer and the one the next one will be the better answer so you need to select the best answer that will solve the root cause of problem no temporary root cause of the problem okay and even if you get a predictive question or an agile question consider each question that you are a servant leader you need to help the team you need to train the train the team unless it is mentioned in the question the team is virtual consider they are collocated unless it is mentioned in the question consider each team as a hybrid team so these are very important step i also put it in this way these as 3s 
Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the the formula you can put it in three S. You spot it. You spot the problem in the question. What is the problem in the question? Okay, then you stop. Then you stop and think how you will first. You spot the problem. Then you stop and think how you are gonna solve the question. Then you sway. You move away from the question by understanding what the question has said. Another important. tip for the question there will be 180 questions there will be 180 question in the pmp exam once and each question will be entirely different they will have no relationship to the previous question so once you are solving the next question leave that question behind don't carry that baggage if you carry that baggage you will not be able to solve the next question leave each question behind this is very important that once you are solve you don't want to still think be thinking about the question number 1 while you are answering question number 15 or 16 okay now we'll solve the hard questions of pmp i will point out to the person i will name at least one person he or she will solve question with me they can unmute everyone else mute yourself and put the answer in the chat box same people watching on youtube whatever the answer you think you put in the chat box and if you have any clarification you want to ask why this is the answer why this is not the answer you can ask you can raise your hand and i will more than happy to answer that question okay so you will have 70 second to solve the question vakas would you like to solve the question from the question number 1 okay sir uh, which of the following interpersonal and team skills did you learn as a project manager you have spent significant time and effort working to transform the engagement level of resistance uh, stakeholders to that of supportive you believe your success is a result of your focused efforts to engage stakeholders in discussion to understand their perspective and gain their trust so for me interpersonal team skill did you in the negotiation Cultural awareness, observation, and conversation, political awareness. So, because you change the resistance to the supportive, so that is the uh, main what you did. So through negotiation, I will delete this elimination technique. Cultural awareness. Cultural awareness is there is nothing mentioned like okay great observation and uh, conversation political awareness so I will go with the uh, C observation and conversation observation and conversation so guys a very well answered question in which uh, Vakas utilized the elimination technique he read the question he solved question one by one and then he uh, went to the root cause of the uh, root cause of the problem and solve it in a beautiful way makas well done beautiful it is c is the right answer well done makas okay let's go to the next question uh, gora would you like to answer this question ah uh, sure a, an external organization that provide expertise and has to has a special relationship with the enterprise is called functional manager seller business partner customer as it seems like a very easy question but it's a different thing uh, everyone answer directly to me there is an option to answer direct message instead of putting in the uh, common chat box because i don't want other people to get a uh, like herd mentality everyone start answering the same option thank you thank you say it's a business partner how did you eliminated a customer or seller uh, uh, because functional manager will not be of course the thing and uh, seller normally is selling their goods and service to the buyer and customer is like who is whoever uh, i can say business partner because He is on not only providing expertise but maintaining the special relationship. Well done, well done. Like 
बट रिमेंबर दिस थिंग गौरव दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वेन एवर यू आर सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज यूज एलिमिनेशन टेक्निक अनलेस यू मेक इट अबिट वेन एवर यू सी अ क्वेश्चन विद वन और टू लाइन यू विल बी मोर देन यू विल रन अवे टू वर्ड्स द आंसर सो यू नीड टू यूज एलिमिनेशन टेक्निक एंड यू मेक इट एज योर पर्सनल वेपन टू हाउ टू सॉल्व क्वेश्चन ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच करो could you maybe explain this elimination technique like why it is not with customer yes. because for me it seems same seller and customer 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 is someone who basically uh, no seller seller is someone who is selling is uh, like uh, seller you have seller and you buyer you have buyer sell buyer and customer is the same thing okay so now when we talk we, we are saying that in a external organization that provide expertise and has a special relationship with the enterprise they are working with them okay yep. they are providing this expertise and we have a special relation with them it's not customer the customer never provides that it's not functional yep. manager okay so this is elimination technique two options are eliminated straight forward seller is that they just just provide the services we don't say that uh, like they have a special relationship maybe we have thousands sellers maybe they are not providing expertise they are only providing the goods when someone has a special relationship it's always they become our business partner okay gorav thank, thank you okay let's move to the next question okay who would like to answer okay tarni sharma would you like to answer ah uh, sure uh, at what stage of project do stakeholders have the greatest ability to influence a project uh, during execution at project start at project end uh, throughout the project life cycle so at what uh, stage of the project do uh, stakeholders have greatest ability to influence the project uh, so uh, during execution um mm, again means that uh, during execution at uh, so amir as per me i guess uh, since during execution is part of project cycle at the project start and project end all these three options come under throughout project life cycle so i think stakeholders are uh, uh, i mean stakeholders are involved in each and every step of life cycle so i guess d should be the answer the question is asking the greatest ability okay, okay. the question is asking the qualitatively greatest one we know okay. that okay the if the question was when they when they have a ability of course that would be throughout the project life cycle but the question okay. categorically okay. answered greatest ability okay so where okay. where they have the greatest ability mm-hmm. so maybe uh... um well i i think that when the stakeholders are all are aligned and when there is requirement gathering etc so i think that could be start of a project why start come again because this is why uh, the, the, i mean this is where i guess um, okay understand have, this thing can okay. you understand this thing uh, zaka please meet someone who is uh, there's a background noise coming okay so you understand this thing. once the project is starting okay stakeholder can say that we don't do not execute the project do not execute okay. at all the project cancel the project they can easily cancel the project why they haven't invested even a penny there they haven't invested in the penny there as the project move the project manager starts having more and more authority and stakeholder start losing their authority okay stakeholders start losing their authority again and if you have focused on this keyword each question has a keyword so put a special okay. focus on that so that was removed during execution okay at the start of the project at end of the project at end of the project the project is and what can they do they cannot accept yeah. till the project is completed we can still can close the project okay so at the start of the project they can cancel and they can finish the project clear okay thank you so if anyone has any confusion they can uh, raise their hand and i would la- would answer them if they have a confusion about this question yes uh, jaise it is you write the answer very clearly because in the starting stakeholder will have more interest and more opportunity to influence it okay 
but for the pretty okay so tisam can you answer the fourth question and you mute yourself and answer uh, yes yeah, sure um, all of the following could be considered while tailoring the stakeholder management process except development approach stakeholder diversity complexity of stakeholder relationship communication technology okay all, all of the following could be considered while tailoring the stakeholder management um i, I i'm really not clear with the question at the all of the following could be considered while tailoring the stakeholders management process except now the question says you can consider all the things you can tailor when you are tailoring the project according to the stakeholder you can consider all the things except which thing you would not consider while tailoring mean modifying the process according to the stakeholders requirement according to changing it are you, are you able to understand now the sum um no Okay, let me tell you this thing. Let's say I am making a project for Americans, so okay. I will modify or tailor the project according to their requirement. If I am making the project for Indians, I will I will tailor the project according to their requirement. Okay. Uh, let's let's take example of McDonald's. When McDonald's operate in US, they have a different taste. When they operate in India, especially in the known, especially in the vegetarian area where people don't like to eat meat. they tailored their food they make their burgers according to their requirement they cannot sell the beef burger there or the chicken burger where the people are vegetarian because it will not sell they tailored it that is called tailoring now tailoring is clear yes tailoring is clear okay so now let's see the option development approach okay let's hold this option okay stakeholder diversity of course we always Uh, modify the project according to the diversity if i just gave you an example of yes. diversity okay so this will not be the answer complexity of relationship how relationship will complex of course you will change tailor the process if stakeholders mm. are very like dependent on the project you will have a different communication if they don't care about the project you will have a different communication okay mm. communication technology now this is one of the most important thing when you are communicating with the stakeholders let's say i have stakeholder from china i cannot use whatsapp they don't use it so i have to tailor my process i have to tailor my uh, so communication tool maybe i need to use wechat there so that we yeah. can communicate also if i want to talk actually i do that i have students all over the world if i want to talk people in saudi or uae whatsapp will not work i have to call on bot him i am so i mm -hmm. am i am tailoring the tailoring. technology so only thing that is left while going from the uh, while using the elimination technique is development approach okay development okay. approach which development approach you will use that does not affect uh, how you are telling the stakeholders yeah, stakeholder. is it clear always yes, yes. even even this is very important guys and girls even even if you don't know what the answer is always try to use elimination technique with the elimination technique most of the time you can reach to the answer thank you thank you very much thank you, thank okay. you. okay let's go to the next question okay who will answer this if anyone want to volunteer they can raise their hand otherwise i'll nominate someone vishnu vishnu are you with me Vishnu, are you here? I cannot hear Vishnu. Okay, Ritesh, Ritesh Kumar. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Ritesh Kumar, please answer this question. Yeah, as an experienced project manager, you understand the importance of developing a detailed stakeholder register. Your team has started populating the stakeholder register using the approved charter and business case document, and have provided the initial draft. of the register to you for review after questioning the team on the process that they used to develop the initial draft you remind them that they forgot to utilize one key document to find potential stakeholders 
which document did your team forget to analyze to find potential stakeholders? Um, project management plan, corporate organizational chart, lessons learned, register, um, benefits management plan. So um, project management plan is eliminated because they are still in the process of planning. Um, so um, that's not complete. Um, benefits management plan is eliminated as well because it um, mostly talks about benefit. So the two options are corporate organizational chart and lessons learned register. Um, So, um, a corporate organizational chart, um, um, high level um, resources are already part of project charter. So I will go with lessons learned register. Okay. So let's work this question. Especially, I highly recommend whenever you are solving the question, that is a long question, Ritesh, try to read the last line. It will give you the context of the question. Okay. So... Ritesh, uh, which document did your team forget to analyze to find the potential stakeholders? So from this, we can understand this thing. We are we need to look some document to find the stakeholders, right? Yeah. Okay. So kind of a problem we get. Okay. So then there are four options. So what was the problem in the question? What was the problem? Which problem you defined in the question? forgot to utilize key document to find potential stakeholders. So some stakeholders were missing maybe? Some stakeholders were missing. So which documents we have uh, utilized to make our stakeholder register? We started making stakeholder register, no? Yeah, project charter and business case document. Business case document. There is also one other document that is made, that is used along the business case document in the initiation phase. Okay. Use this document. We have two business documents, no? business case, and which is the second document? Benefit management plan. Please, please uh, let him answer. Uh, um, yes, Ritesh. Charter, project charter. So project charter. charter. We already use charter, no? we already use approved charter. Yeah. Okay. So we have two business documents that we go through in the initiation phase, business case and benefit management plan. Yeah. Okay. Oh, if you, yeah. uh, Ritesh, if you walk with me in the question, as an experienced project manager, you understand the importance of developing a detailed stakeholder register. So we are talking about stakeholder. Your team has started populating the stakeholder register using approved charter and business case. So we haven't used benefit management plan and have provided the initial draft of the register. After questioning the team on the process they used to develop the draft, you remind that they forget to utilize one key document for potential stakeholders. Okay, so we are in the initiation phase. So one of the key document is benefit management plan. You, you miss the benefit management plan that is in the initiation. So corporate organizational chart, what is corporate organizational chart? There is nothing like that. Maybe you have a corporate organizational chart. We talk about project organizational chart, your organizational breakdown structure. Corporate organizational chart is no term in the PM. It's a made up term. Okay. So uh, this was a total elimination type question. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ritesh. So D is the right answer. Okay. Benefit management plan. Yes, Gaurav. Uh, benefit management plan only talk about like how to sustain, how to get benefit, how to maintain those benefits, not about like the stakeholder, it but has, it has target benefit. It has target benefit, dates of benefit who will get those benefits? Who will get those benefits? So when we okay. put, who will get those benefits? So they are stakeholders. Clear okay, because corporate yeah. organization chart is like also the hierarchy level chart. So from the- Hierarchy their... level chart, that it is hierarchy, but is it in PMP? Okay. It is hierarchical. I know it is hierarchical, but where you read that term in that, in, there is no term in PIM book or exam content outline or ATP. This, this is a term that we use in our corporate level. 
but there uh-huh. is no okay, okay. Okay, Thanks, it's yeah. more like a, uh, we we need to use PMI terminology. They say that we need to type uh, we need to wear PMI hat. So very important question. So it was a good question. Thank you, Ritesh. Let's move to the next question. Uh, okay, so who answered the question in between? Faiza, have you answered any questions so far? I was the one who answered in between. Sorry okay. for that. So, like, no, you have you answered any other questions so far? No, 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 no. All have. the questions. Okay. You in the process good? of producing communication problems within your project, you devise plans to use a variety of communication technologies. As you create the plans, you remind yourself that all of the following are factors that influence the cho- choice of IT communication technology, except uh, number eight, availability and reliability. Ease of use, clarity of the message, sensitivity and confidentiality of the message. So as you create the plan, you remind yourself that all of the following are factors that influence the choice of either communication, except, except um, availability and reliability. I think um, I think it influences the choice of communication technology. Reliability is, I think, according to me, is a um, factor that affects ease of use, user friendly. Um, it is mm, clarity of message and sensitivity and confidentiality of message. Um, what is on? What is your answer? Um, I think uh, confidentiality is also a key factor in the communication. So see the clarity of the message. So we are looking for the factor that is not important. So yes, clarity of the message can be something that we can consider as accept thing. Well done. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Let's solve the next question. Who will solve it? Okay. Adil? Malak Adil? Yes, sir. Please. If you receive a complaint from a stakeholder that she is not getting enough information about the project, what should you do? Inform the stakeholder that you have been sending information as per communication management plan. Uh, ask the stakeholder to review, the, uh, review all the project documents in the project repository. Review stakeholder information needs and update the communication management plan if needed. Review stakeholder information needs and send the communication management plan for review. Okay. Like uh, inform the stakeholder. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, this can be a possible answer. Uh, ask the stakeholder to review all the project documents. In the no, this is also uh, a feasible choice. Review the stakeholder information needs and update the communication management plan if needed. Yes, this can be a choice. I could have told. Review stakeholder information needs and send communication management plan for review. Uh, now, why would we review it? We need to give him uh, her the information. So, I, I'll go for C. Well done. Well done. Nabil, you even answered in like 50, 60 seconds. Well done. C is the right answer. Good. Okay, let's move towards the next question. Okay, so who would like to answer this one? Ayush? Ayush, would you like to answer? Yes, sir. Please, go ahead. Uh, Which of the following approaches should be followed to improve the effectiveness of the meetings? Uh, public setting an agenda before the meeting and setting ground rules for the meeting. Advising meeting attendees to only discuss one topic at a time. Making participation mandatory distributing email invites for meetings. Reducing the number of people in the meeting and invite only those who are participating. From the start of the current project, the weekly team meetings have proceeded past the allotted one hour time period and the project manager has been unable to receive updates on all project activities. In reflecting on the meetings, the project manager identifies that team members frequently talk at the same time, often discuss random unrelated points. 
and a small number of attendees fail to contribute at all. Which of the following approaches should be followed to improve the effectiveness of the meetings? Uh, here, uh, publishing and before the meeting and setting ground rules for the meeting, uh, advising meeting unit to only discuss making particular mandatory. Uh, I'll go for A. And the reason for A? Um, because uh, if we publish the agenda beforehand and uh, based on the ground rules, people will be aware of the agenda and they will be talking to the, to the point. And your answer is right. But again, in order to save time and understand the context of the question, I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you read the last line first, especially for the questions that have that are of three lines. Like for example, I don't know which screen you are using. I'm using same type of like 24 inch screen that is provided in the PSN centers. And this question appears on one, two, three, four, four and a half line. So I highly recommend your answer is right, brother. Like try to so try to read the last line to understand the context of the question. But whatever the method you do, if you get the answer right, I always say that that works. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, yeah. let me see the option. Anyone has any questions? Okay, no one has any question. We can move further. Okay, next question. Uh, Chimzi, if I'm pronouncing it right, Chimzi, would you like to answer? Shamesy. Okay. Uh, Ibrar, is it right? Ibrar? Yes, yes. Would you like to answer this question? Ibrar, would you like to answer this question? I guess Ibrar is not interested. Rabia, would you like to answer this question? Rabia Khan? Umar Sadiq, please answer this question. Okay, sir. Which of the following scenarios best describe the use of unofficial communication? You as a project manager would like to make the best use of use of unofficial communication on the project. Which of the following scenarios best describe the use of unofficial communications? Establishing and maintaining the profile and recognition recognition of the project and building strong relationship between the project team and government, establishing and maintaining the profile and recognition of the project among senior management, establishing and maintaining the profile and recognition of the project and building strong relationship between the project team and its stakeholders, establishing and maintaining the profile and recognition of the project and building strong relationship between the project team and local community. Okay, so uh, relationship between project team and the government uh, should not be unofficial. So that that would not be the option. We, eliminate, we will eliminate a uh, project among senior management also not unofficial. It should be offi official. That should also be eliminated. Uh, relationship between project team and stakeholder also should be official. That should okay. also be eliminated. And uh, left out option would be D, project team and the local community can be used the unofficial communication. According to me, I would go with D. Okay, you would go with the D option. So, okay, establishing, how did you eliminate it C? Let's talk about that, Omar. The C, because between the project team and its stakeholders, so stakeholders are the one who can influence or can be influenced. So the communication should be official means. It, it should not be unofficial. We are, I not don't know, talking about, we are not talking about project manager and its stakeholders. As there can be thousands of stakeholders. How can we have thousand, uh, official communication all the time with those stakeholders? Okay. But Understand, uh, Umar, let's talk about option D. Establishing and maintaining the profile and recognition the project and building strong relationship between the local community. 
how can we have uh, with the local community how can we have unofficial communication with the local community even in any organization we most of the time we have pr people whose job is to talk to the local community general people are even not allowed to talk with the local community this happens or not yes so that communication becomes unofficial or official but sir again it's a project team it's not a project manager okay okay i understand that but with the local community do you talk you are a project you are a project team member are you allowed to talk with that uh, with the team no are, with the local community no so that but sir among, very... among among the other option i think local community you have nothing to do with with your project so i think we can have no no local community have a lot of doing umar maybe you are just considering your project there are projects in so many areas that is working in a very difficult circumstances they need to satisfy the local community if they don't satisfy the local community or don't take care about the local community they wouldn't let let them do the project so the communication okay. with the local yes the communication uh, can, can i add something uh, please please uh, let, let me talk to him then you can raise your hand if you if someone wants to say something let's follow the ground rules which i described in the start sure faisal i will let you so this is very important to understand umar c is the right answer because you always with the local community you always have direct communication that goes to the pr or some people and you plan that communication and mostly it is in the written form or even in the verbal yes faisal please add your two cents uh, basically uh, if we read the option number c and option number d uh, local community is also a part of stakeholders yeah so and are. government is is also a part of stakeholders yeah uh, but, in, uh, but in op- uh, but in option a uh, with government while dealing with government uh, we can say it's a official communication uh, but in c and d uh, it's still dicey for me local community and stakeholders i think both are the same things both are the same st- thing but here we are specifying here we are specifying no 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 uh, option c and d local community no, and the i am i am putting i am putting in everyone na? in all the three okay. options a b and d we all we are specifying the stakeholders the government a specific stakeholder external stakeholder very important senior management mm. internal stakeholder very important stakeholder local community external stakeholder can be upward downward depending upon that but again very important stakeholder here we have used more of a generic term okay so if even if we use elimination technique uh, so this becomes the better answer is it clear sir yeah makes sense thank yeah, you yeah it's clear thank you person okay bio would you like to answer the question here yeah. which of the following rules could the project manager leverage to help rectify the situation rules to leverage the situation schedule meetings in advance have purpose for the meeting for the right people in attendance create and publish an agenda and a set of rules for controlling the meeting demonstrate courtesy and consideration of each other and control who is allowed to speak the project team meetings have historical have historically been chaotic undisciplined and unsuccessful in delivering the value the project manager needs in the previous meeting the team demonstrated disrespect in the form of taking over each other shutting up late and not paying attention to information presented which are the following rules could the project manager leverage to help d d is the answer um should do meetings in advance have purpose of the meeting okay b so by let's see let's say the first thing what is the problem in this question
Bio, what is the problem in this question? There is disorderliness during the meeting. Okay. Okay. Chaotic, undisciplined, and unsuccessful in delivering the value to the project need, project manager needs. Okay. Okay. And also they are doing disrespect in the form of talking over each other, showing up late, et cetera, et cetera. Schedule meeting in advance. This will not help. Right. Have a purpose yeah. for the meeting. Which uh, with the right people in attendance. Okay, you are saying B. Yeah, but, but I don't think that is correct. Um, setting the set of rules. This is only one rule. Setting the set of rules for controlling the meeting, like meeting agenda, uh, putting there who is allowed to talk, who is when not to allow the talk. How can you have right people? Maybe you need some people. You don't think they are right, but they are important for the project. You understand my thing, Bio? Yeah. Understand, yeah. understand this this concept that uh, other people. It is possible you consider they are not important, but they are they are very important for the project. You need to get them. What you will do then? Okay. So whenever there is a problem to for handling the meeting, always set the ground rules. Always set the rules. For controlling the meeting, okay. Let the option demonstrate courtesy and consideration of each other. Okay, courtesy you can demonstrate if the team is not demonstrating courtesy. You need to set the rules. For example, I need to set a ground rule in this meeting when uh, when I and someone is talking. You need to raise the hand. You cannot just speak. For example, one student has raised their hand. Now that's something how you control the team. that's something how you control the meeting clear bio this is actually happening in front of you are you getting me yeah yeah, yeah. so how you can put be bio we need to put more of a elimination technique guys i specifically selected question that are more towards the meetings because they are coming in the exam more towards the resource and the people domain because people domain is the most important domain currently in your pm exam thank you yes faiza you have a question No, actually, I wanted to contribute um, that why part C is the answer. I think we have done this type of question previously, like two, three questions back. We have done this sort of question, which is uh, like to set an agenda and a set of rules for the meeting. There was some sort of question like this before as well. Yeah, you are right. You are right. Thank you. Someone also raised the hand. I cannot see. Please kindly raise uh, your hand. It's me, Anirudh. Uh, so other other giveaway in this question is. uh in the last line it say which of the following rules so the yes, rules is specified yes. so uh, yes, that's yes. a quick give away good one good one anirudh good one okay so anirudh i want you to solve the next question okay within which document will you store this information okay resource requirement project uh, all can be a option midway through the project you discover the need to acquire resources in addition to what you had initially planned Okay, in an effort to obtain these resources at the lowest possible cost, you find a department within the company that has the resources you require. After submitting a request for resources and negotiating with the function manager that controls the resources, you are able to obtain agreement that he will provide the resources for a limited period. To ensure the agreement established is sufficient, you provide the manager with a finalized list of resources that will be provided and ask that he clarify the dates with. which your team has access to these resources so it's date it's calendar resource calendar well done well done you answer right but again my friend always use why whenever you are answering answering always use why this is the wrong answer i called it as a positive biases that whenever you using and solving any question you need to see why this is not the answer why this this is not the answer go through each option why 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 this is very important initially it seems like a time consuming but slowly slowly it will become a habit and this will help you to clear your exam in a better way okay, okay. see the right answer thank you okay tavkir tavkir patel would you like to answer the question tavkir patel yeah i'm here yes i will yes. answer the question go ahead so the last line says as the project manager 
which of the following conflict management techniques would provide the best way to move forward in the situation. So smooth is not a conflict management technique. And uh, so we have three options limited now, problem solve, force, and reconcile. Normally force or force is also not considered a good option because as a servant leader, this is not uh, effective. So now we have limited to two options, which is problem solve and reconcile. So going back to the question, two members of your team are disputing the method to resolve a high severity defect that has been identified. Due to the nature of defect, the fix for it must be implemented in the next three hours. As the project manager, provide the best way to move forward in this situation. Uh, the best will be So now this and becomes an int interesting so thing. It will be, be forced actually because we yes, that's why I was smiling when you said the summit today. Because most of the time, ninety nine percent, you are always right. That you as a servant leader, you never do the uh, forcing, but you are running out of time. It's a high severity defect. You need to look for the project also. So you need to force the decision and uh, like move forward. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So uh, the answer would be C option. You need to force it because of the time criticality. Uh, Derry, would you like to answer? Derry? Derry, would you yeah. like to answer? Who's there? Okay, Santosh. Santosh. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, in an attempt to find ways to improve your project, you develop the idea of selectively integrating the use of virtual teams. Despite your enthusiasm for the idea, your sponsor believes that virtual team offers little to no value to the project. Additionally, your sponsor admits that he has never seen a virtual team in practice and requests you to submit a short report detailing the, project, uh, detailing the projected benefits that the project will achieve. Which of the following would you not include in your report to convince the sponsors? Virtual team increases the opportunity to include people with mobility limitations or disabilities into the team. Okay, virtual team increases the opportunity to include people with mobility limitations or disabilities into the team. Correct, it's possible. Virtual teams will reduce the schedule and expedite project completion. Okay, I will hold this back. Virtual team offers the ability to reduce travel expenses, right? Virtual team offers the ability to add special expertise to the project from other geographic areas. Yes. So the option B, I will not include. All other three are valid. So your answer would be? Option B. Well done. Well done. I really like the way how you solve the question. Well done, Santosh. Okay. Question number 14. Okay. Force technique has to be used when you are short of time. Okay. Prakshit Rana, would you like to solve this question? Yes, sir. So, uh, which of the following project document would the project manager not leverage in creating accurate cost estimate? So, accurate cost estimate, uh, uh, in this case, the options are uh, risk register, uh, project schedule, change log, and resource requirement. Uh, so creating an accurate estimate. So in this case, uh, yeah, risk register uh, will be an option. Uh, project schedule uh, again will be an option. Uh, change log resource requirement. It will not leverage, so 
risk register. So, what is what is your final answer? Option A. Option A, and that is the right answer. Well done. Okay, should be B. Gora, why should be B? Because project schedule is like scheduling of the activity, and uh, so if it is a scope. So when we are calculating the cost estimates, when we are calculating the cost estimates, the estimates are dependent on the schedule. Okay. So which of the following project document would the project document not leverage in creating an accurate cost estimate? We are oh, not yes, using. Oh yes, yeah, you're right. Thanks. We, yeah. are not, we are not using like maybe we calculate the risk later on, the risk responses and all those things, but. We need resource requirement. We need change log, not the risk register. Yeah, again, going yes, back yes. to the again going back to the elimination technique. Okay, let's solve the next question. Okay, bio did answer. Javed Iqbal. I mean, uh, I have one doubt on the previous question. Who, who's here? Uh, Anirudh. Anirudh, please always raise your hand. I had. I, I have placed the hand. I couldn't see. Okay, please uh, okay. go ahead. What uh, uh, in during the cost estimate, do we need do we need the change log? Because uh, uh, yes, more than change yes. log, the risk register is needed. Because uh, with the risk, we will be doing the contingency plan and contingency reserve. But the change log will be created yeah, at a later. Yeah, good point. Good point. I missed it. Good so change point. log yeah. is created at a rate later stage. But the cost estimate, we do it at the. Uh, Initial yes. or planning. Yes. So good point. Good point. C can also be the answer. Like how did how can we eliminate how can we eliminate C option? Now that's a good point. And now to look it again from the another perspective, your answer seems more sense. Option C make more sense. I'll check this question again. But yes, I am anirudh with you. C becomes a more answer because when you are making baselines, scope yeah. baseline, schedule baseline, cost baseline, the risk register will be something. Once the risks are updated, all three baselines can be updated. Whereas change log, it will have the minimum effect on it. You are right. So C, C seems a better answer. But let's get the Prikshit, you answer this question. Right, sir. So how can how you eliminate it change log? Sir, because uh, change log happens at the later part of the uh, uh, later part of this. Huh? So the question is saying which of them will not leverage? Which of yes. them will not, uh, not oh, leverage? Like after Anirudh, I'm also thinking that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Anirudh. C, C is the better answer as compared to the other. Okay. So, guys, when you are wrong, you are wrong. I was wrong. Change log is the right answer for this question. Okay. So. No, this question is not relevant as per se. Okay, so let's see who else can answer the question. Vishnu, did you answer it? Vishnu? Vishnu, I cannot hear you. Yeah, I remember I asked you before to solve the question. Vishnu? Okay, I cannot hear you. Jyoti, please answer this question. Jyoti? Yes, sir. Uh, under yeah, please. Under which conditions is the parametric method of estimating most reliable? When estimate when estimating is done at activity level and then summed up for the project, when considerable historical data is taken into account, when estimating is done at high level and distributed down to activities, when expert judgment is used so parametric method uh, parametric method is uh, pessimistic optimistic most likely no 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 that is three point estimation that is a three point <laughs> estimation jyoti you need to although they are not that important in the pmp but you need to work on them you need to see which That's type of estimation? Important. It's okay. It's not that much important in the exam, but still, if the easy question comes like this, you need to, yeah, 
Sorry, are you able to answer this, or we can give you another question? No, I wouldn't. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yes, Jyoti, we cannot wait. I, the time I actually have a habit of doing it in my mind rather than reading loud. So. <coughs> sure, go ahead. I'm confused. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Zaka, would you like to answer? Zaka? Zaka yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, answer. Under which condition is the parametric method of estimating most reliable? When estimating is done at activity level and then some up for the project, then consider historical, uh, historical data is taken into account. When estimating is done at a high level and distributed down to activity, uh, when expert judges choose or estimate is weak. Option B, when considered. Yes, well done, well done. Option B is the right answer. I'm proud of you, my friend. Option B, uh, analogous estimation is same, same. Like if you make a 200 square feet house, and again, you make a 200 square feet house. That's an analogous estimation. Parametering is using the parameters. 200 square feet, 400 square feet. Okay. So this is basically B option. Well done. Okay. Let's solve the next question. Vishnu, you raised the hand, but we are unable to hear you, brother. Okay. Javed Iqbal, did you answer the question? Yes, sir. Yeah. You answer the question. Yes, Bio. How can I help you? Uh, on the previous question. Yeah. Um, at activity level, I think we have. Um, this is bottom up. This is this is bottom up. When estimating is done at activity level, you uh, add at estimate, estimate, and you sum up. That is bottom up estimation. You sum up. That is bottom up estimation. When estimation done at higher level and distributed, that is top down estimation or sometimes known as analogous. Expert judgment is used. Okay. Parameter estimation is there. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Farooq, would you like to answer? Muhammad Farooq? Uh, yes, sir. Please answer. What action, what action should you as project manager take next? Politely inform the stakeholder that you are unable to produce the feature as a scope baseline has been established. Instruct the team to create a pilot version of the feature to test the sale manager's assumptions. Instruct the team to incorporate the feature into the project plan. The return on investment will pay for the added cost. Submit a change request to modify the project scope to include new, feature, new features. Shortly after your team completed the definition of project's cost baseline, a key st stakeholder, a sales manager, requests that you add an additional feature to the project. The st stakeholder believes that the additional feature will help him land a very lucrative client. In discussion, in discussing the scenario with your cost analysis analyst, you determine that the potential increase in revenue exceeds the cost of building the feature by the factor of four. Which action should you take the project manager next? Politely inform the stakeholder you are unable to know. Instruct the team to create a pilot version of the feature to test the sale manager's options. No. Instruct the team to incorporate the feature into the project plan. The return on investment will pay for the no. Submit a change. Submit a change request. The last one. B. Well done. Well done, my friend. It was a long question and you answered it in yeah. the very good way. Okay. Yeah. Abdur Rahman Al Ansari, would you like to answer the question? Yes, Umar Sadiq, how can I help you? Yes, Amir. Sir, in, the, in the previous question, there are two options that starts from instruct. So, should we consider them as a ne negative words? 
yes they are the negative words they are the negative word okay they are the fine okay. thank you thank you yes gorav in this question in which case stakeholder uh, project manager can deny the request in this case like because normally project manager project also don't want to project manager should not deny the request she should not let the request come let the request come and then work on this you see the stakeholder believe that the additional feature will help him land a very lucrative client so if the stakeholder believe then you need to work with them but okay. there are multiple stakeholder can bring like several feature and stakeholder so can also be if they are if they are bringing that you bring it to the change control the let the change team decide but okay. in agile like by default we should consider it agile or... no why? no this is predictive it's not agile in agile we don't have cost based line it's an yeah. hybrid yeah. or a predictive question the, the it's straightforward it says the cost based line we don't have we have product backlog in the agile not cost based line and the second thing is the question says that a key stakeholder okay it's another keywords that we need to look at a key okay. stakeholder is asking about that thing okay thank you okay thank yes prakshit yes prakshit raise your okay yes mamat farooq you have a question yes sir regarding the same question uh, i have one doubt whether project manager can deny or accept the things from uh, from stakeholders other than change request from the like if they are asking for directly if they are saying without going to the change control board please add this thing into the scope the project manager cannot deny that if they are saying like without going to change control board do that they are asking a scope creep project manager can deny that yes Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, Prakshit, you'll uh, yeah, go with the question. Yeah, sir. Uh, if we are uh, at the closing stage, at the end of uh, of of the monitoring and control, and at the start of closing stage, so if this request comes, so uh, can we deny again, it? Again, the change goes to the change control board. Na? They will decide. They will they will check the impact. Uh, like maybe we need we can start a new project with this. Maybe we increase the baseline schedule baseline before that. If something if something is changing the entire project, we can do that, na? Okay. Thank you, Prakshit. Abdul Rahman Al Ansari, please answer this question. Okay. What should the project manager do next? Create a quality management plan. Perform a quality audit. Prepare presentation uh, to management explaining. the adopted quality management plan perform uh, quality inspection midway through our uh, midway through the execution of project uh, the project sponsor conducted uh, project sponsor contacted contacts the project manager and informs her that uh, he is worried about he is worried the project will not meet the plan quality standards what should the project manager do create management quality management plan that by default will be created during the execution uh, perform a quality audit prepare a presentation that um, yes my uh, a, a and d will be uh, eliminated because okay. quality management plan will be by default uh, okay. inspection it is not done so uh, as a part of uh, i think b b quality is right you think right brother well done yeah right answer good okay question number 19 okay uh, venkat which of the following is the best way to view project quality you overhear a colleague who is a project manager being shouted at by his project sponsor you are the project manager project quality is your concern okay which of the following is the best way to view project quality managing quality is the responsibility of everyone wherein levels of participation in the quality management effort may vary okay 
The sponsor is correct in saying the project quality is not the concern of the sponsor. I wouldn't go with that. The sponsor is the only person responsible for project quality since it is the sponsor who has authorized the project now. Quality is the concern of the project team members only. So uh, I wouldn't go with B or C. Uh, so I'm left with A and D. Uh, managing quality is a responsibility of everyone wherein levels of participation and the quality management of what may vary. Quality is a concern. I would go with A between A and D. A is the right answer. So many people have messaged that why not in the previous question, why not D? Okay. So midway through the execution of the project, the project sponsor contact the project manager and inform her that she is worried about the project will not meet planned quality standard. Mm -hmm. So standards, when you want to check whether the standards are being implemented or not, this means you are in managed quality. You need to check the effectiveness of the process. When we do inspection, inspection is more of a checking the deliverables. When you are checking the deliverable, then you do the inspection. You go and check the deliverables. We are not talking about the deliverable checking. We are talking about the whether the standards have been implemented or not. And quality the standards, uh, we are checked by the quality audit. Okay. I hope that is clear to everyone. So guys, la yes, Bio? Um, can, can, um, I think audits is to be done by stakeholder is, that is external to the projects. What is your question? I didn't understand the question. If in the previous, in this um, previous question, audits is to be done by stakeholder that is external to the project. Why no, should the project manager do any, audits? Anyone, anyone can do the audit. Who, shall, who says that the audit has to done by uh, this person or not this person? Audit can be internal, audit can be external. Who says that the audit has to be external? It's not compulsory. Most of the time, quality audits are internal. It's nothing, it's not written anywhere. Audit can be done by anyone. Inspection is checked for the deliverables. Okay, we are not talking about the deliverables. For to check the effectiveness of the process, we do the audit. Yes, Umar Sadiq. Sir, uh, I have a concern about the quality audit that is performed after after the completing the deliverables not no, during the no 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 they audit is all about the checking the effectiveness of the process how you are implementing that while the deliverable is being done or even being produced but especially during the deliverables it's about it has nothing to do with the deliverables it's more have to do with the process are you following the agreed procedures and process or not and in this case are you following the required standard or not okay that's the quality okay, so, of so, so after completing the deliverables what quality uh, checking should be performed we we do a, we do a quality inspection we do the inspection whether the deliverable meets meets the quality management plan or not okay inspection is is, is at the end Inspection is, the, inspection is the tool for control quality. Audit is the tool for manage quality during thing. Na? Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Gaurav. Uh, you mentioned like audit can be done by anyone, but team members should not do it. Like either internal, okay. external. Who says that team member cannot do the audit? I read this one term because if team member is doing the audit, they member, might favor the things. No, if you assign a team member, it is not necessary. Like we have a quality team and then we have a scheduled team or some different team. So you can, you can have a thousand member team member. You need to define that. You need to define that. It's, uh, if it is written somewhere, that's wrong. Team okay, I mean, like the team member who is doing their stuff, who is developing something. And they, 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 I mean, they can, how can they do their own audit? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean that. They, no, they, how can they do their own audit? That does not make sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Last question, guys. Okay. Who has not answered the question so far? They can raise their hand. Faisal, would you like to answer? Faisal Jangi. A junior project manager. Please answer. Yes. Okay. Who will 
uh, how will you explain the difference between the two? The audit department perform uh, quality assurance, while the project management office perform quality control. Well, QC is controlling the quality and QA is accepting the deliverables after that. QC measures the quality of project del deliverables and QA audits the result of QC and quality plan. QA measures sell perform seller performance while QC measures the project performance. Now back to the question, a junior project manager at your organization is confused about quality control versus quality assurance. How will you explain the difference between the two? It means the only one option is right. Uh, we will follow the elimination technique. Uh, QC is controlling the quality and to accepting the year. Here the one for the clear the audit department perform quality quality control. Measure the quality of QC controlling the quality of accepting it after that. Uh, I think uh, option A and option B is not suitable. And option B and C, QC is controlling the quality. QA is accepting the deliverables after that. Option C is QC measure the quality of project deliverables. A QA audit the result of QC and the quad. I think option C is more suitable. Well done, uh, well done. So, uh, well done. So, this this was the what the confusion you guys had. Quality assurance actually overlaps quality control. Okay, mm -hmm. quality control is all about checking the project deliverable. Quality assurance is the audit. Okay, it check the effectiveness whether the plan is being done or not in the both processes. If the plan is being implemented or if it is not, so quality assurance take overs both of this process. So this answer that query that most of you guys uh, were having throughout the project. Okay, guys, that was yes, Vishnu, go ahead. What is your question? So audible now, sir. Yes, now audible, but we are done with the 20 questions. <laughs> uh, like uh, that means the audit is uh, means applicable for both process, manage quality also and control quality. Also. Yes, but audit is being done by qual quality assurance or manage quality yes. is doing yes, the yes. audit of both process. Yes. Okay. In both processes, audit is being done again by the quality assurance. That's why the output from the quality assurance, it comes there. Okay, guys, few things I would like to share with you. We discussed how to solve the question. So I have actually put down this in this template. You can use that. Step one, step two, step three, the entire uh, steps formula, how you can use these questions. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, then the most important thing when you solve uh, the question, when you solve the question is root cause analysis is doing the root cause analysis like you review the question what is right what is wrong and you follow the pattern okay let me show you one or two templates if you need i can share that with you no issue and you can adopt the pattern according to your own requirement okay so this is one of the template uh, Fire, please put the question in the chat box. I'll get back to you in two minutes. Again, the template of the questions. You need to work on the questions and you need to understand the project framework. Okay. So you can have this snap reference whenever you are solving the mock as a big overview, what you are going to do with the questions. This is a kind of a template that you can use to solve the question. You categorize the question, what type of the question it is there. It belongs to which knowledge area just to understand where you are having issue, which people process domain, what is the learning point. From each question, you must get at least one learning point. If you are solving a mock of 180 question, 
you must get 180 learning points and you can have mock one mock three mock four and we you can have overall learning points whenever you are reading the question you that becomes your lesson learned you can review those 180 points so that you know okay these were my mistake and slowly slowly when you understand those you can eliminate those learning points from your overall list but in this way even if you solve only four or five mocks you can solve the question it's a very important way to do the root cause analysis you can do this mock template or this is also one of the template that you can use it we also have another template let me show show it to you guys okay okay you can use what other template you like I have a lot of templates. Each student actually tailored it to their own requirement, whatever they think is best. For example, this student, he took a topic, whatever the lesson he learned, and he put a description. And he put only those topics that he think he's, that are confusing to him. So he, instead of going to 180 question, he only put his master list. I recommend using the both template, putting this as a master list and going through this all 180 question one by one one by one one by one okay so uh, when is the ritesh is asking when is your next live stream so if you are asking about such live stream that is open for free for public in which you guys can come to zoom we do one coaching call for for the entire public every month so probably end of october apart from that uh, we do uh, apart from that, we whenever we do coaching call, normally like we have five, four or four coaching calls in this week. Out of four coaching call, one or two we or do the live coaching call. And one more important thing: every Thursday from now, every Thursday, the time I have to finalize probably it will be 10 p.m. I will do live coaching call in which I will solve the question. Okay, so we will having more stuff coming up in the futures. Uh, from Faiza had a question from where we can get the PDF you are showing on how to solve the stepwise. I made mean, it, I can share it to you. Just message me wherever you have uh, contacted me before. Just contact me there. I'll share you those PDF. Stakeholders identified at every stage of the project. So stakeholder identified in the little can also have greatest influence. Yes, they can have the greatest influence even in the later latest things. Okay, send me this template just message me will do yes Faiza, if you have another question you can ask otherwise i'm moving forward okay so next thing mind maps so guys i highly recommend using mind maps when solving the questions understanding the mind maps so we have made our own mind map mind maps okay for the like this mind map is for the entire pmp this is a one my one mind map for the entire pmp Okay. you can print it in the bigger paper and you can clarify it from from pro difference from project to operation how to select a project business case benefit management plan project chapter identifying stakeholder and so and so things everything at one sheet okay the entire mind map in the one project I highly recommend that you make your own mind maps but you can also use other mind maps just revision they are more of good for the revision of the process okay then the mind map for fundamentals agile mind map for the each and every topic okay the next mind map is for like all the process group stakeholders communication resource risk quality procurement business environment sc scope schedule cost business environment and change management flow so all the mind maps, mind maps actually uh, help us how we can work, how we can have the entire vision for the project. You can message me uh, at WhatsApp or in the Gmail. I will share whatever you need, what I showed, I will share it with you. Okay. Now the final thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys, how to manage time. Okay. How to manage time in the PMP exam. So guys, when you book the exam, the exam will say that you have 270 minutes for the exam. When you go into the exam, the first 10 minutes will be of tutorial. Don't skip that 
tutorial time don't skip it because those tutorial time you can understand what is happening in the process and you can comprehend it in a better way you can uh, like ma you can go through that how to use that software if you haven't done so uh, mocks from such kind of softwares you can use that software plus to relax you i will like after the this we will have a deep breathing exercise for a minute i highly recommend that you do deep breathing exercise in that process that is also very very helpful you can do that in that process so 10 minutes for that then we have two breaks 10 minutes 10 minutes okay when the break come i'll tell you so 10 minute goes there and then last 10 minutes at a survey so your pmp exam is actually 230 minutes and you need to solve 180 question in that 230 minutes okay this is very important the exam will not tell you how to manage time you need to manage time i recommend when you solve the first 60 question because when you solve the 60 question you put the next button the exam will ask you do you want to review i don't recommend that you review it just the, and the exam will ask do you want to take a break take a 10 minute break then when you come from question 61 62 1 to 60 again so 61 to 120 okay 61 to 120 again the exam will ask you do you want to review or do you want to take a break again take a break then from 121 to 180 now if you spend the entire time in the first 60 question the exam is not going to tell you you need to manage that time that you complete the first 60 question in 80 minutes for example when the exam start you will be at 230 minute so when you reach 150 minute you must be able to complete your first 60 question if you are not able to complete first 60 question hurry up read the last line read the options read the last line read the option try to complete the question in 4 5 minutes because these 4 5 questions are not important you have 120 question ahead okay so once you go there you take you take a break these 10 minutes of break are not counted in this time the timer will stop and the timer will start running try to come back in 8 minutes so that you have time to turn on the system like uh, so come back in 8 minutes okay and in in your breaks drink a glass of water drink a glass of water go to washroom if you have to bring a chocolate with you so that you can have your energy as a high Okay, I take a bite of chocolate. I don't eat chocolates at all. I only eat in the exams. Okay, so let's say you finish the first sixty question at one forty-five minutes. Okay, now you need to spend okay eighty, eighty, seventy minutes. Now you try to spend seventy-five to eighty minutes here. Once you left, once you reach seventy minutes remaining. you must be able to do 120 question if you are at question number 10 or 115 try to try to see speed up try to solve these last 5 10 question in the same way read the last line and options read the last line and option even if you get four, two questions right it's okay it's worth it because the other question the remaining 60 questions are more important again you go to the break those 10 minutes don't count you come back let's say you start with the 68 minutes here so now you have 68 minute to complete 60 questions best is that you have 70 minute keep on solving the question let's say 5 minutes left in the time read the last line solve the question read the last line solve the question goal is to complete the question and let's say you are now left with only 2 minutes don't read anything just keep on solve keep on clicking on one option don't try to do a b c d a b c d so this is very important that you solve the question in this way this is the way how i recommend my students to solve the question and we have 99.3 plus success rate we have 179 certified pmp out of 180 this means over system works so you can work in this way now let's do a small deep breathing exercise if you would like to please uh, 
turn your camera on and if there is no background so i'm behind you so please turn your mic on also let's do that deep breathing exercise in the next time next class we'll all, i will do a 15 minute meditation session but for now let's do a deep breathing exercise please everyone turn your video on everyone okay thank you thank you aruj okay Dari, okay. Okay. Now deep breathing exercise is one of the most important exercise that you can do, not only for solving PMP question, but whenever you feel tense. And believe me, you will feel tense during PMP exam. Okay. So wherever you are, just put your hands on your chair, on your lap, wherever you want to put. Close your eyes. Please close your eyes. Take a deep breath from nose. Even if you are mouth breather from nose. Exhale. When you inhale, try to uh, inhale it completely and hold your breath. Don't immediately throw it out. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. As much as you can. Now let's do this three times. Everyone do it. Open your eyes. Now put in the comment box. How do you feel? Put in the comment box. How do you feel? So this is the power of deep breathing exercise. It takes five seconds. You can do in the exam, during question, whenever you want. And if you want to perform, if the time you feel sleepy, if you want, if you want to perform, you can do the entire meditation, five, 10 minutes. That can help you. So thank you very much for joining us. That's all for today. I hope I have been... Uh, valuable to you and the past two hours have added some value in your PMP journey. With this, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste. Sasriya. Goodbye. Good night. Thanks a lot.